So this is technically, um, we're going to work today, and it's going to be 4-3 part E, okay? And it's going to be on hyperbolas, okay? So um, we're going to be doing, part E is really going to encompass slides 1 through 10 of this uh, presentation, and it's going to focus on uh, drawing hyperbolas and identifying the various parts of the hyperbolas, um, the center, the vertices, the foci, um, the branches, and drawing them out, the asymptotes, and then drawing your hyperbolas. Hyperbolas are basically two parabolas. I mean, there's a definition, I get it, and you can read it for yourself, but basically it's two parabolas that go in opposite directions. So this would be vertical uh, hyperbola because, again, um, the parabolas go up and down. You also have horizontal hyperbolas where they go like that, okay, from left to right. Um, and so what happens is, again, these are also going to have different parts, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. So um, the main parts of a, of a hyperbola, let's just say, um, well, let's identify here. Basically, you're going to see that each one has its own vertices or vertex, okay? If I connect those vertexes, that's called the transverse axis, the line between the two vertices. And if I take the um, center or the midpoint of that line, that is the center of my hyperbola, okay? And we're gonna start with a center at zero, zero, and then we're gonna start with a center that has been shifted. Um, the distance between the center and the vertices, that's the A value that we talked about so much in the previous um, things. And then the distance from the center to the foci, because there are two foci. Remember, the foci is inside of each parabola. And the distance from the center to the foci is your C value. So notice you have an A value and a C value like you've had before. And you're actually going to have a B value, and we'll talk about that in a subsequent slide. Um, so again, we're talking about the center being at 0, 0. And um, we have a formula that sort of looks um, consistent, right? Looks like something you've seen before, but it's a little minor difference. This formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. The formula for the ellipse was a squared minus b squared. So that's one difference from an ellipse. It looks similar, but this is a plus. The second thing is that in our... Um, in our formula for our ellipse, we had an x squared and a y squared, and it equaled 1. But in the ellipse, we were adding these two. Here, we're subtracting them. The other difference is in that in an ellipse, the um, a squared um, always went under the involved the larger number. Well, here, the a squared always goes under the first term. So it didn't alternate. It's always under the first term here. So it's a squared and b squared. And so if I do this one, since the x squared is first, I know that this is going to go with a horizontal because I know that my axis here is going to be on the x-axis, okay? Um, now, if I'm talking about a vertical and my axis line is going to be on the y-axis, then I would make y squared go first. Okay, and again, a squared is always under the first term, so that never changes. So it would be y squared over a squared as opposed to x squared. So notice that everything else is the same except the x and the y switch places depending on what axis line, um, you know, is it a vertical or is it a horizontal graph? And again, if you look in this picture, you're going to see all those same things that we've discussed in the past. Um, uh, again, you've got your parabolas, you know, they're in red, okay? So the parabolas, you have this red parabola here, and you notice that you have a vertex and a vertex. Same with this one, parabola, vertex, red parabola here, and vertex, right? Um, now, you notice you also have foci, right? You've got a foci right here, and you have a foci here. You have one inside this upper parabola and this lower parabola. So you have your foci. You also have a center, okay? 
Uh, again, the, the center is the midpoint between those two vertices. So you have that green center there, okay? So we've got a center. Um, and so the only thing left to kind of see is those blue dotted lines, and you're probably wondering what they are. Well, those blue dotted lines are asymptotes, okay? These in particular. This is an asymptote and this is an asymptote. And every hyperbola has a pair of asymptotes that it will not cross, okay? Now, how do we come up with the equation of that um, parabola? How do we know where that, not parabola, the equation for those asymptotes? Well, we're gonna do that in the next slide. So if you have horizontal hyperbola, which means it goes like this and like this, the equation for the parabola because you know, your center is going to be here, is going to be y equals positive and negative b over a x. So b over a, plus or minus, is going to represent your slope. Okay, um, And again, we'll do this together, and it's going to make a lot more sense. If you have vertical hyperbolas, okay, your parabolas are going to be, your slope is going to be plus or minus a over b x. Um, so again, we're going to see how you do it, but you want to, this is, you definitely want to memorize uh, which formula goes with which for the slope. Is it B over A or A over B? But other than that, you'll see that it's pretty simple. So we're going to come over here and it says find the center, the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes, and then they want us to graph it. So remember that everything is always equaling one with ellipses and hyperbolas. So I'm gonna start out just by dividing everything by 16, okay? And I'm gonna get x squared over four minus y squared over 16 equals one. And when I look at this, I know that because I have this, remember that I know my basic thing is a squared over a squared well, let me just do, I'll just do the letters. X, sorry, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals one. Because they put in the formula, they put the x squared first, okay? Um, I know that this is going to be a um, horizontal asymptote or horizontal um, hyperbola, okay? And um, I know that, again, a squared is always over the first one. So in this problem, I know if a squared is here, then I know that a squared equals 4, which means a equals 2. I know that b squared equals 16, which means b equals 4. And remember, if I'm looking for c, I know that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So I get a squared is 4, b squared is 16, so c squared equals 20, which means that c equals the positive and negative square root of 20, or that's a 4 times 5, so it's 2 radical 5. So I know that I have my a value, my b value here, and I have my c value, okay? And all that is going to come into play to help me identify everything I need to identify. Now, in this problem, I know my center is 0, 0. So remember, um, let's just kind of start to draw it out. Again, I feel like I need to draw it out to kind of visualize this. If my center is at 0, 0, okay, I know that this is horizontal. Um, and so I know that from the center to my vertices, I'm going to be A units away. So if A is 2, I know that if I go 2 units over here, I have my vertices. If I go 2 units to the left, I also have my vertices. I know that my uh, foci, I know that my foci is going to be um, C units away from the center. So if my um, C is 2 radical 5, then I know that at 2 radical 5, I'm going to have my, so here's 3 and 4. So 2 radical 5 is, is something like between, I don't know, it's close to 5, right? So let's just say it's about here. That's 2 radical 5. And then if I go in the other direction, let's say negative 5, 
I know it's somewhere around here as well. So this is my foci and this is another foci. And so now all I have to do is draw my asymptotes and I'm able to um, draw these um, uh, draw these uh, things. So again, when I name my center, I'm going to name it with an ordered pair. When I name my vertices, I'm going to use ordered pairs for this. So I know my vertices is at two are at two zero and negative two zero. I know that my foci are going to be at uh, two radical five zero and negative two radical five zero, right? And so again, my asymptotes is where I'm at right now. And remember, there's a formula for that. Because it's an x squared, it's a horizontal hyperbola, I know that my formula for my asymptotes is y equals plus or minus b over a x. And so that means it's going to be plus or minus. Uh, I know b is 4, a is 2, X, so it's going to be plus or minus 2x. Now, I could leave it like that, or I could even do plus or minus 2 over 1x. Remember, this is a slope, so it's very helpful for me, It's and I'm going to use that slope from the center. So basically, I'm going to be going up 2 over 1. I'm going to go up, and then I'm going to go, let's say, down 2 and back 1. That's positive 2 over 1 slope, like this. And then if I do the negative 2 over 1, it's up to back 1 or down to over 1, and I'm going to do this. And so here are my two asymptotes. This is y equals 2 over 1x, and this is y equals negative 2 over 1x. And so now I'm really ready to draw my graph. I know my asymptotes are going to look like this. I don't even need you to come up with points. You know it's just going to kind of follow that curve. And that's really everything. So my asymptotes here are going to be y equals plus or minus 2 over 1x, or I can say y equals um, plus minus 2x. Remember, your asymptotes are lines, and so they're going to be in the form of the equation of a line. So again, we're going to come over here, and we're going to look, and we're going to start drawing all of our conclusions. We know we have to start by dividing everything by 100, because remember, these equations all have to equal 1. So this is going to be y squared over 4 minus x squared over 25, and this is going to equal 1. And if you notice, you've got a y squared is first, which means this is a vertical hyperbola, okay? So that's the first thing, vertical hyperbola. Uh, the second thing, you know, remember, your a squared is always under the first term. So a squared is 4 here, which means a must be 2. Um, the b squared is 25, which means b must be 5. Okay, And then we can use the formula to find um, the c squared, because we know that c squared always equals a squared plus b squared. So a squared is 4, b squared is 25, so c squared equals 29, and that means that c equals the positive and negative square root of 29. So we've got some pretty important um, pieces of information already here, right? We've got a is 2, b is 5, c is plus minus. We know this is a ver vertical hyperbola. Okay, so then already, like in my mind, I sort of already need to start thinking about what it looks like. Again, I know not everybody needs to do this, but I know I do. And so when I go to my graph, and it does want us to graph it anyway, so we might as well get started, right? So we're going to start graphing it, and I know that in this problem, the center is 0, 0. So even though I haven't written that, I know that my center is 0, 0. So that's, again, another really important piece of information. So I come over to my graph, and I'll start with my center. Oops. So center is at 0, 0. And I know, again, that my... Um, the a value is the distance from the center to my vertex. So I know that if a is 2, I'm going to go up 2 units here, right? And I'm going to go down 2 units. So I know that my vertices are going to be located at 0, 2, 
and 0, negative 2. Okay? Then I know that the C value is the distance from the center to my foci. And so the square root of 29 is going to be somewhere between 5 and 6. So 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's 5. Here's 6. 1, 2, 3. That's negative 5 and negative 6. And so I know that my foci is going to be somewhere here and here. Okay. So I know that my foci are going to be located at, and you could do like plus, minus, or sorry, it's going to be 0 because it's on the y-axis, and plus, minus the square root of 29 like that. Or you can write it as 0 radical 29 and 0 negative radical 29. Either way is fine with me, but that's the location of your foci. And so now what we need is our asymptotes, and then we're able to do our, a proper uh, graph. And so we have for our asymptotes, asymptotes, we need our equation. And we know that our equation for this is going to be y equals positive or negative a over bx. Because it's vertical, we're using the formula with the plus minus a over bx. And so that, you know, plus minus a over b is going to be my slope. I'm going to have a positive slope for one of the lines and a negative slope for the other. So again, I come over and I know that a is 2 and b is 5. And so my slope is positive and negative 2 fifths x. And so I'm going to take that slope from the center, right? So I'm going to go up 2 and over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the negative direction. So I'm going to go up 2 and over 5. I'm going to go down 2 and back 5. So this is my positive slope. Okay, this is my asymptote. This is 2 fifths x. And then I'm going to do the negative 2 fifths x now, which would be up 2 and back 5, or down 2 and to the right 5. And this is the line of y equals negative 2 fifths x. And those create my asymptotes. And so now I'm able to take my vertices. I know what my graph is going to look like. It's going to be like that. And again, I'm not going to need you to be super precise. You know that that's what it looks like. Okay? I could hug the asymptotes a little more. I'm sure the graph does. Like I'll show you. It could look a little bit more, you know, more open kind of fatter. Um, but again, I'm not going to be super picky about this part of it, okay? As long as you have the correct points. And again, the points that we're looking for, notice they wanted the center. Okay, well, the center is 0, 0. They wanted the vertices. Well, the vertices are here, okay, at 0, 2 and 0, negative 2. They wanted the foci. Again, we have the foci right here. And the foci on the graph is there and there okay and then they wanted the asymptotes which again we have our equation for our asymptotes and they're on the graph and then they wanted us to actually graph it so everything we need to know is here and you just need to really practice the, pr the process okay so now what happens if the center is shifted right the center is not always at zero zero well remember that x goes with h and y goes with k. And so your shift is going to be x minus h squared and y minus k squared. And because x is first here, we know that this is a horizontal hyperbola that's been shifted. And this one here, notice you have a y minus k squared and an x minus h squared. And so again, this is a vertical hyperbola that has been shifted. So the important thing, again, is just to recognize where your center is. And once you know where your center is, then you can, you know, for example, if your center's here um, and you know it's a horizontal hyperbola, then you know that you're going to be, you know, your, your vertex is going to be A units to the right and A units to the left. And you know that your center is going to be C units to the right and C units to the left. And you can kind of find the ordered pair that way. 
Uh, you can always also use the formulas, but again, I think the formulas are just too hard to memorize. I think I would try to understand it better more than memorize. Um, now the asymptotes, again, remember they're equations of lines. Um, and so here, this is a little bit um, more confusing. Notice you have y equals k plus or minus b over a, x minus h. Again, remember the horizontal um, asymptotes have the slope of plus or minus b over a. And I would, I would venture to say I would subtract k from both sides and I would make this look like this y minus k equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h. I think that's a little bit better. This would be y minus k equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h. And again, I'm going to show you how to use it for the horizontal and how to use it for the vertical. But I think that this um, definitely helps, um, helps you out a little bit more. Remember your k and your h. Uh, remember, your center is going to be located at the ordered pair of h, k, and so that's where those values are going to come. So again, here they want us to find the center, the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes. So again, first I'm going to notice that the numerator on the left side, right, that that numerator in particular is the y. So I know that this is going to be a vertical hyperbola, okay? And it equals 1 already, so I don't have to do anything, uh, divide by anything. And I know, again, that my um, denominator on that first one is always a squared. So a squared equals 9, which means a equals 3. Um, for my second one, I know that um, b squared equals 4. And so I know that b equals 2. And remember now that there's a formula to help me find c. Right, I know that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So a squared is 9, b squared is 4. So c squared equals 13. So c squared equals 13, which means c equals the positive and negative square root of 13. And so I have my a, b, and c now, which is really important. Um, now, when I'm trying to identify my center, which is also a very important value, remember, I know that's h and k. And so I notice, remember, h goes with x, so it's going to be negative 3. It's the opposite of what's there. And then the y value here is the k value is going to be minus 2. So I know my center is located at minus 3, minus 2. So... At this point, let me kind of get an idea of what this is starting to look like. I know, again, that my center is at minus 3, minus 2. So right here, that's my center, okay? I know that my a value, right, is the distance from my center to my vertex. And so this is a vertical parabola, which means, again, if a is 3, then I'm going to be going up 3 units, so up three units would take me to one. So that's one vertex, right? And down three units, negative three, negative four, and negative five, that's going to be my other vertices, okay? So this is my center here. Um, and remember that my C value, right? That's going to be, again, the distance from my center to my foci. So once again, plus or minus 13, um, this is going to be approximately, or plus or minus square root of 13, is going to be approximately um, between 3 and 4 units long. So it's going to be approximately 3.5, not even, it's not going to be exact, but it's just going to give me an idea of where I'm going to draw that point. So again, I know that my foci is going to be from the center, I'm going to go up 3.5 units. So... If um, the vertex was three units up, 3.5 would take me to about one and a half. Now I know, let me kind of drop this a little bit. This is at one, and this is going to be then around 1.5, and there would be my foci. And then again, I'm going to go down um, around 3.5 units, and it's going to be here. Okay, so that's my second Okay, so 
again, um, now if I'm actually doing it correctly, right, I know my vertices, okay, that on the graph I kind of eye it. But in reality, I know that if my ver vertices is negative 3, negative 2, if my vertices are 3 units above this and 3 units below it, I know it's going to be negative 3 and 3 units above and negative 3 and 3 units below. I'm going to add and subtract 3. So my actual ordered pair is going to be negative 3, 1 and negative 3, negative 5. So these are my ordered pairs for my vertices. Here's my center. And then my foci, I'll do it the same way. I know my foci, again, is going to be negative 3. I'm going to take my center at negative 2, and I'm going to add the square root of 13 to it. And then I'm going to subtract the square root of 13 from it. So I'm going to get, you know, whatever that answer is. And again, I'm okay with you just kind of writing it out like that. You can even do negative 3 plus, no, not that, sorry. Negative 3 is my x, and then your y value is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 13. So that would be the two ordered pairs individually or combined. So I have my center, my vertices, um, and my foci, and now I just need my asymptotes. And when I'm working on my asymptotes, again, it's really important that I'm very clear on the correct equation for my asymptotes, okay? And so again, it's going to be y minus k equals plus or minus. Because it's a vertical hyperbola, I know that the slope is a over b, and then it's x minus h. So the only thing that changes, again, in the vertical and the horizontal is... Um, if it's horizontal, it's b over a, and if it's vertical, it's a over b. And so I know that my k value is, from my center, is negative 2, so this is y plus 2, um, plus minus my a is 3, my b is 2. And I know that um, x minus h, h is negative 3, so that's x plus 3. And so this equation here would suffice. And again, I don't need you to simplify it and draw the equation of those lines and all that. What's really important is how do I um, identify those asymptotes here on the graph. And what you're going to do is you're going to start at the center, and you're just going to use this slope. You're going to make a line from the center with a slope of positive 3 over 2. Um, and so that's going to take me to here right, up 3 and over 2. I'm going to go down 3 and back 2, so to negative 5. So I'm going to go down to negative 5, negative 5, like that. And I'm going to have this line here, and that's one asymptote. And then I'm going to go up 3 and back 2, and down 3 and over 2 to here. And again, I'm going to connect, well, it's terrible. I'm going to connect those dots, sort of, and I'm going to do my other asymptote. So the slope of this one is 3 half. The slope of this one is negative 3 half. And again, then I can do my graph here. It's going to look like that, and my graph's going to look something like that. And that's it. So I, I'm going to write the equation of the asymptotes using that, but I'm not really going to worry about it for graphing. For graphing, I'm simply going to take the slope from the center in all four directions and come up with those four points. And again here we got another one so we're going to make sure that we've got everything that they're asking us to do. So first of all I'm going to put this over one and I'm going to notice that on the left side the very first one is an x. So I know that this is a horizontal um, hyperbola. Okay. I know again that um, a squared is the first denominator, so it's 1, which means a equals 1. I know that b squared is the other um, denominator, so it's 9, which means b equals 3. And I can use this with the formula, again, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and I can figure out what c squared is. So c squared is 10 which means c is the positive and negative square root of 10. And so, again, some pretty important pieces of information here. So a is 1, b is 3, and c is plus minus 10. 
the other thing I can draw from this uh, thing is my center. I know that my center is going to be located, remember it's HK. The H goes with the X, which is the first one, which is three. The K goes with the Y, which is in the second fraction, and it's two. And so I know my center is at three, two. So already, I, you know, I already know so much about my graph. I know that um, my center is at three, two, right here. And remember that um, it's a horizontal hyperbola. So I know it's gonna be something like this and something like that, right? Now, of course, I don't know exactly where those things fall, so that's where I have to start using the, for example, the A and the C value and everything else. So let's extend this out a little bit. Five, one, two, right? Three, let's go over here to the negative, negative one, negative two, negative three, and I think that's enough points here. So again, I know it's a horizontal hyperbola. I know that my A value is one. So I know that if I go one unit to the right, that's going to be my vertices to the right. And if I go one unit to the left, that's my other vertex. Okay. I know that my C value is going to be the distance from my center uh, to my foci. So from that center, I'm going to go plus or minus the square root of 10. Now, plus or minus the square root of 10, again, is a little bit above three units. So I'm going to go about three, little more than three units away from C, which is going to, and notice the center is at two, three. So here's six and here's seven. I know that my, um, if I go three, a little over three to the right, it's going to take me just a little bit beyond six. So that's my foci. And if I go three units to the left and then a little bit more, that's going to take me to something a little bit between negative one and negative two. And so that's my other foci. Okay. So I have my center, I have my vertices, and I have my foci. And so now I'm pretty much able to graph as soon as I get my um, asymptotes. So let me just kind of write down what those values actually are for these things, okay? So I know my center is at three, two, which is what they wanted, right? I know my vertices, okay, are located at here. It's going to be, my, my x is what's changing. So if my center's at 3 and 2, my vertice is going to be at 3 plus a, which is 1, and at 3 minus a, okay? So that's going to equal 4, 2, and 2, 2. And that's where those points ended up, okay? And then my foci... Again, I know it's a horizontal axis here, so I know my foci is going to be um, 3 plus square root of 10, 2, and 3 minus the square root of 10, 2. And so that's why I got over to here and to here. Okay, so these are the ordered pairs for my vertices, my foci, my center, which again, we wanted. Now we have to figure out our asymptotes, and so that'll help us to graph. So I'm gonna need the equation for the asymptotes, and so I do need to actually write that equation out. And since this is a horizontal, I know my equation is going to be, it's always gonna be y minus k equals plus or minus, but this is where it's a over, oh no, this one is b over a rather. This one is b over a, and then it's going to be x minus h here, okay? And so that's the formula for this one. So when I go to do that, again, I start plugging in, and I know my center is located at uh, 3, 2, so it's going to be y minus 2 equals plus or minus, uh, b is 3, a is 1, and x minus h, which is 3. So my official equation for my asymptote is going to be plus minus 3, x minus 3. And this is completely acceptable for your asymptote equation. 
Notice it's really two lines. It's the line of y minus 2 equals positive 3 times x minus 3 and y minus 2 equals negative 3 times x minus 3. Now, for graphing purposes, I'm not going to expect you to simplify that and keep going. What you can do is you know the slope is 3 over 1. So it's going to be, you know your slope of your two asymptotes is going to be, 1 is, it's positive and negative 3 over, 3 over 1. Okay? So you basically start at your center, and you're going to do the positive slope first. So you'll start at the center, and you'll go up 3. Okay, so you start at the center, and you're going to go up 3 to 5 and over 1 to 4 like that. And then you're going to go down 3 to negative 1, and then you'll go back 1. And so let's say this is negative 1 here. And you'll connect those dots. And this is a slope of a line. The slope of this line is um, positive 3 over 1. And then you'll do the negative slope. So again, you'll go up 3 and back 1 to here, or you'll go down 3 and 1 to the right over here. And you'll have your slope of negative 3 over 1. And so those are your forming your asymptotes. I know earlier I kind of did the asymptotes in blue, so let me kind of do that instead. Right, let me stay consistent. So I make these points in blue. And then my graph will be in red. And so again, I know that I have a parabola goes this way and one that mirrors and kind of goes this way. And all those, um, that graph right there has everything you need because that graph has the center, that graph has the asymptotes with the correct slope, it has the two vertices, and it has the two foci. And again, here you've listed all of those pieces of information, okay, with the equations, uh, actually right here, and the graph. So that's everything you have to do to graph.